Hey, it's Mark Wiens here. I am in Tokyo, Japan, which is one of the world's largest cities, and there are so many things to do. Uh, of course, this is one of the best cities in the world for food. So many awesome restaurants and delicious things to eat. I'm gonna be cruising around Tokyo, and I'm gonna show you what I think are 25 of the top things to do when you're in Tokyo. So keep watching this video. Let's explore Tokyo together right now. Market just next to Ueno Station and Park. There's almost everything in this market you can imagine from cosmetics, I've seen the big piles of shoes, jackets, clothes, uh, golf stores, like army fatigue stores, and also it's very famous for buying snacks. So, giant snack stores. You can pick yourself up some green tea Kit Kats. You can spend a few hours here wandering around and exploring for sure. Uh, we just took a walk through the park and now we are about to enter the Meiji Shinto Shrine. So this is one of the most famous places to visit when you're in Tokyo. Located in the center of Tokyo, yet in the midst of a quiet forested area, Miyagi Jingu is one of the landmarks and most important religious Shinto monuments in Tokyo. When I visited, I got lucky to see a wedding ceremony taking place. I am at the Sumo Stadium. Pretty cool place to visit. I'm pretty bummed right now that I'm not here during uh, uh, fight time. You can also come here when it's when it's not fight season, and there's a little museum um, at the at the stadium. It's pretty small, but there's a bunch of photographs of the different famous sumo wrestlers, as well as little 3D models of uh, basically every kind of winning technique or position. After going to the museum, no visit to Tokyo's sumo town would be complete without a proper sumo feast and a dish known as chanko nabe. This hearty stew tastes absolutely amazing and it will fill your belly with extreme satisfaction. We just entered the Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden. This is uh, one of the famous gardens in Tokyo, central Tokyo, and you actually pay a fee of 200 uh, yen to enter. At first I wasn't so sure about paying entrance to visit a park. But after walking around and seeing a few of the amazing gardens, I thought it was well worth it. There's an impressive greenhouse, Japanese gardens, formal French gardens, and a traditional tea house. Ginza is one of Tokyo's most prestigious upscale districts. There are plenty of malls, food courts, high-end restaurants, and boutiques. And just a short distance from Ginza is Yurakucho train station. Tucked under the railroad tracks, you'll discover dozens of izakaya bars and restaurants, each with unique character. I went to a place called Yakitori Tonton for a quick beverage and a plate of succulent grilled meat. Oh, I am at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government offices. Uh, and there is a, an observatory, I think it's on the 45th floor, offering a 360 panoramic view of Tokyo. And the view is just unbelievable, actually. And the good thing is you can come here for free. You can walk around, there's a couple of gift shops, it looks like. the Tsukiji fish market, walk in and when they suit you're a tourist, you'll get a map. Uh, but basically you can only visit the wholesale area and then there's a bunch of, uh, a few restaurants and a vegetable area. Uh, now if you come at 5 a.m. you can get in for the fish auction, the tuna auction, but they only allow I think 120 people per day to, the, to see the auction. It can be pretty tough to get a spot to see the early morning tuna auction. Plus, you have to wake up really early and make the trip there. So if you decide to skip the auction, just head to the wholesale area around 9am when it opens for tourists. 
I was amazed at the quantity and diversity of seafood available, some things I had never even seen before. When you visit the Tsukiji fish market, eating sushi for breakfast is basically a rite of passage. There are famous restaurants across the street from the wholesale market, and also some great places in the outer market. Sashimi over rice, and you can see it has, um, I got the fatty tuna, plus um, the, the fish roe, salmon fish roe, and this is sea urchin. the Shibuya crossing and which is like basically a sea of humanity crossing the street at one time. It's like 50 meters of solid people. Shibuya is not only famous for its massive street crossing, but it's also one of the most well-known areas in Tokyo when it comes to shopping and fashion. There are some nice department stores, shops, and some good food as well. Sumida River and the park. This is a good place to come if you're you want to do some exercise, a nice place to take a relaxing stroll. You can also um, choose to do the Tokyo cruise and it's a little pricey but you get to cruise along the river and see all sorts of sights and it's a nice leisure experience. I am at the Imperial Palace and gonna take a walk around here and especially see the stone bridge, which is one of the famous things to see, as well as the try to get a view of the palace. Tokyo's Imperial Palace is the residence of the Emperor of Japan. You can't walk into the palace grounds by yourself, but you can apply for a free tour on the official website, and when your booking is accepted, you'll have the opportunity to take a tour inside the gates. Ueno Park is a huge public park in Tokyo, surrounded by temples and shrines, cafes and restaurants, the Tokyo Zoo, and a few noteworthy museums. Throughout the day you'll find people walking and jogging, others performing dances and playing music, and others just enjoying the outdoors. The Tokyo Museum at the far north side of Ueno Park is one of Tokyo's most renowned museums, preserving art and artifacts from around Japan and throughout Asia. The modern Tokyo Skytree is a 634 meter high communications tower. Within the mega tower are a number of viewing decks and galleries, and they claim that you can see a view of up to 70 kilometers in distance. At the base of the Tokyo Skytree is a huge mall. on a street right now known as Takeshita Dori, which is a walking street, and it's especially famous for people dressed up in animation characters, um, cartoons, all sorts of costumes, uh, cartoon characters, and just uh, a very interesting place, and it's especially popular with teens and young people. <laughs> Along with the unique atmosphere and cosplay that takes place, Takeshita Dori Street is also extremely famous for the Harajuku crepes, and you can choose from dozens of different types. The crepe is fried thin, wrapped into a cone shape, and then stuffed with whatever you choose. About to go into Sensoji Temple, which is one of the main places to see when you're in Tokyo. This is sort of, I think this is sort of the entrance gate and then we're gonna walk around in there and check it out. Every day, big crowds of both religious pilgrims and countless tourists visit Sensoji Temple, one of the most important religious sites in Tokyo. The temple dates back to 628, making it the oldest temple in the city and a historical treasure. Surrounding the temple, you'll find little shops and a few places to sample some snacks. I decided to try a Japanese sweet bread, which was extremely fluffy and quite sweet. I am at the Ido Tokyo Museum. It's quite a structure. The real price is 600 yen, but if you have this Tokyo Handy Guide, and I got this from the tourist center, um, you get a 120 yen discount. So that is just 480 yen for the ticket, and 
That's a good little discount. Make sure you have this handy guide. Made to look like a warehouse on stilts, though I sort of think it looks more like a UFO, the Edo Tokyo Museum is dedicated to preserving the history of Tokyo. Edo being the former name of the city. As soon as you enter, you'll cross a wooden replica of the famous Nihonbashi Bridge, and then you can walk through the many exhibitions to gain an education of how Tokyo became the city it is today. As you probably already know by now, I normally like to stick to street food when I travel, but there's something about Tokyo that makes you want to experience the elegant, luxurious side of the dining scene. Food in Tokyo is so incredibly elaborate and so aesthetically pleasing not only to the taste buds, but to all of your senses. At fancy restaurants in Japan, they pay acute attention to every minute detail of the atmosphere and presentation. The food will undoubtedly be outstanding, but the entire experience is what really makes the fine dining in Tokyo so remarkable. If you have the budget to splurge on a nice meal in Tokyo, whether it be international or Japanese cuisine, the experience you have will be unforgettable. I am in the area of Tokyo known as Akihabara, and this is also known as the electronics town, gamers town, geek town. So if you are looking for electronics, or if you're a crazy gamer, this is the spot you're gonna wanna come when you visit Tokyo. Akihabara is home to electronics stores, game stores, arcades, the animation center, and those infamous maid cafes. It even has its own temple, where you can often see businessmen seeking luck for their latest modern ventures. And one of the free things you can do here in Tokyo is visit the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Uh, so you walk in and you'll get a visitor's pass uh, and then you can go through the small Tokyo Stock Exchange Museum. But then you can walk around the whole uh, edge of the floor, trading floor, and you can, you can like pick up these phones and, and it will give you an education about what's going on and what they're doing in these different parts of the, of the exchange. So I am at Rapongi, which is a famous area in Tokyo. Uh, you can go to the Mori Art Museum, which is a modern art museum, as well as the Skyview Observatory, which is at the top of one of the tallest buildings in Tokyo, offering a spectacular view of the city. Uh, but you gotta go to the art museum and then you can also go to the, to the observatory at the same time. Roppongi is also a famous area in Tokyo for its nightlife. Uh, lots of bars and clubs here, especially on the weekend nights. I am on the monorail right now, heading to Onaiba City. The monorail is really cool. Some pretty awesome views. The next station is Onaiba Taiki Koen. Okay, made it to Odaiba City, and here at the decks, uh, there's a couple of things to do here, including Legoland, a bunch of different restaurants and cafes. Actually, I saw a couple of Hawaiian restaurants. Uh, but you have a beautiful view of Tokyo Bay, Tokyo skyline. So yeah, Odaiba City, kind of an entertainment island. Odaiba is also home to the famous Fuji TV headquarters building and the mega Ferris wheel at Pallet Town. I am walking around Yoyogi Park, which is one of the main central big parks in Tokyo. This is a favorite spot for people doing dances and exercising, walking their dogs. And it also seems to be one of the favorite spots for these giant sized, chicken sized crows, which, yeah, they're like dinosaurs. Nice park to walk around and a place to people watch, especially on the weekends. I'm here on Tuesday, so there aren't that many people doing their, like dressed up and doing their dances and costumes and stuff like that, but on the weekends you'll see a lot of that. Another very cool area of Tokyo to explore is called uh, Nezu and also Yanaka, which is kind of an old historical area of town. It's a really quiet area. Uh, right now I'm at the Nezu Shrine, which is a really peaceful place, feels like you're far removed from Tokyo. Nezu and Yanaka, two neighborhoods located next to each other, make a great area of Tokyo to just walk around and explore. It's an area of town that has retained a lot of its traditional charm and Japanese culture. Don't forget to walk down Snake Road, a small neighborhood alley that weaves back and forth to earn its name. Walking around Yanaka, you'll find little stores as well as restaurants selling meals and little Japanese street food snacks. It's kind of interesting. 
I don't know if it's sweet or salty. It's a cold and rainy day here in Tokyo, so it looks like my perfect opportunity to try out my very first onsen or a Japanese public bath. That was quite an interesting experience. Basically, you you walk in there and you pay your your fee with a vending machine and it costs 450 yen entrance. And then from there you get a locker and you strip down completely naked uh, and then you can go into the series of jacuzzis. There was one indoor jacuzzi with a view of like Mount Fuji painted on the wall. There were another couple of baths outside. With some Today we're taking a little day trip to Mount Takao which is about 50 kilometers outside of central Tokyo, but it feels like you're far removed from the city. We're gonna climb the mountain and great to get some fresh air and to get a little exercise. Located just about 50 kilometers from the center of Tokyo, Mount Takao is an extremely popular destination for hiking and exercising. And it also doubles as a sacred religious mountain with a number of shrines and temples. If you go on a weekend or holiday, the amount of people can get a little crazy but I went on a weekday morning when it wasn't too bad at all. The air was fresh and we got some good views of the mountains on one side and Tokyo on the other side. There are a number of different trails you can take, one of them that takes you by the Biwa waterfalls. Eating food and exploring the everlasting supply of delicious edible things is without doubt one of the best things to do when you're in Tokyo. And for myself, I can safely say that food was the reason I visited Tokyo. Navigate your way to the bottom of a department store for a culinary frenzy that will make your head spin from the variety of food at hand. Not only does it taste amazing, but Japanese food is easily some of the most beautiful looking food I've ever seen on the planet. So much care and thought are put into each morsel of cuisine. With over 160,000 official restaurants in Tokyo alone, you essentially have a never-ending choice of delicious dining spots that will never run out. You could easily spend your entire life discovering Japanese food in Tokyo, and that would be an awesome life too. But just do your best to eat as much as you can during your stay. From the moment you step foot in Japan, your mouth will begin to water, and I'm here to tell you, your taste buds won't be let down. So that wraps up 25 of the best things to do in Tokyo when you visit. It's a city that never gets boring, and there's literally something always to do, see, and eat. Your next step is to get yourself to Tokyo and start to discover it for yourself. Hey, it's Mark Weens here. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. I'm so glad you enjoyed it, and I hope it will inspire you not only to visit Tokyo, but also to travel more. Make sure you click thumbs up on this video and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more food and travel videos. Lastly, check out my free Tokyo travel guide for food lovers. Just click the link below in the description box. Thanks again for watching.